morning, everyone. On this warm and dry day, or rather cold and rainy day. Good morning, everyone. How are we doing? Thank you. I like the energy. Okay, so my job today is very simple. Um, I'm here talking to you uh, about the future of banking experiences. Now, how many here have a bank account? By show of hands, you have a bank account. Everybody. Some hands are not coming up. How many don't have a bank account? How many just don't want to raise their hands at all? So we're going to talk about the future of banking experiences because banking has changed. I mean, the speakers, the previous speakers that, uh, that were here, from what I gather, they spoke a lot about, I mean, the last speaker just talked about 5G and the things you can do with 5G. Main One has spoken about what, I think Kweke has spoken about Main One and the things that they're doing. But how does that affect your life as far as your banking experience goes? Now, let's have a conversation around this. Now, if we can go to the next slide, I want to find out what's your banking experience like. For a lot of people, this is what it's like. Going to the bank is like war. I have to prepare myself because I know that I don't know how long I'm going to be there. So I rolled up my sleeves and I'm ready to do battle. They are going to come. I am ready for them. So is that what your current banking experience is like? Or is it like this? Can we go to the next slide? Well, it's a bit pleasant. You go in, you go in all smiles, you come out all smiles, and everything is okay. So for how many of you is it the first one? <laughs> how many is the second one? So how do we change that? How do we change that? Because I saw more hands up for the battle side. How do we actually change that? Now, what exactly is the issue? So if you go to the next slide, you'll see that the main issue that I see is something what, the best way I can define it is friction. What is the friction? You want to have your banking services. You want to be able to make payments. You want to be able to do so many things when you want to do it. So you're either in school, you're at work, and the time the bank is open is the time you're either in school or at work. So you have to leave where you are to go and do what you need to do. If you're driving, you need to worry about parking. You need to worry about traffic. And you now get there. And what's the first thing they say to you? Can we move on? Yes. First of all, even accessing the services. There's the whole channel. I mean, and imagine if you're trying to get to your bank in Lagos on a day that it has rained. That's enough headache on its own. Beyond that, what you now look at the services, you get there and someone is asking you so many questions and you're thinking to yourself, but you know this, you are my bank, you have this information already. Why are you asking me all these questions? And another thing that comes up is we have what we call physical digital channels. So you started off digitally and they say, oh, you can download this, you can do this and that, but you must come to the bank to finish it up. That's what I mean by physical digital. Is it really digital? Tension. And then there's paperwork. Banks like paper. We like paper. You must fill it. You just must fill the form. <laughs> you know, you fill the form. You fill the form. Then you go back and you drop it. Then you come back and then you fill another form. You just, you know, there's so much paper. And then that's what causes the friction, because they're thinking, I just want what I want, when I want it, how I want it, with the least amount of stress and the least amount of headache. So how do we do this? How do we make this happen for you? So what we've been doing. Can we move to the next slide? Is that We've been listening, we've been listening to the data. Now data, you're all tech people here, so you understand the power of data. And data shows you a lot. So what does the data tell us? The data tells us that, for instance, something as simple as tracking our parking spaces in the afternoon. We know that there are certain hours between the hours of nine and two. There's a peak period that at some point in time, parking becomes a problem, which means that's when everybody's coming in. So which means people are leaving their offices, their homes, their schools, wherever it is to come and do something, how do we address that? So we need to listen to the data, we've been doing that. Then how do we simplify? How do you just make it easy? You don't have to go to school again to learn how to use a banking platform, really. It should be simple. So how do we simplify everything? And then most importantly, how many of us have received emails or you're downloading something or you've been given something or sold something because that's what you've been sold? And it's not necessarily what you want. And so what we're trying to put in place is that the future of banking is now actually giving people what they want. What do you need at that point in time? When you're coming to the bank 
and you need to maybe download an app, you need to make a payment. Perhaps what you now need is to have an app, right, that's going to help you download. You download that app, you make the payment. You don't need someone selling you another service. You want what you want because you're thinking to yourself, this is why I came here. This is why I left wherever I was to come here to sort this out. So what, the summary of this is that really banking has changed. And because banking has changed, the banking experience has changed. Because now what you'll see is that we understand that our customers are our customers. So as you're walking to the bank, you're not necessarily doing us a favor. You don't go into a store. Let's say you go to Park and Shop, for example, or Spa, and then you go there and you buy a bottle of Coke, and you get to the teller, and the teller tells you, no, you should buy 7-Up. He said, but I want the Coke. He said, no, but you need to buy the 7-Up. But I want the Coke. I am telling you this is the 7-Up that you're going to get. That's sort of what happens with the experience. You are telling us what you want, and we're insisting on what we want to give you. So we've taken a step back to say, what do our customers actually want? What do customers actually want? Again, listening to the data, because the data tells us a story. We've been listening to that story. And one of the things that became clear to us is that as a bank, as any bank, there's only so much we can do. There's only so much we can do in terms of bringing new things in. Why? Because we are heavily regulated, and that's the truth. So the CBN, the NDLA, NDIC, every Amcon, every con you can think of is regulating us. And so when it comes to flexibility, sometimes you're thinking, why can't these guys just do this? There's a number of reasons why we can't just do it. And so the answer, if we move to the next slide, you see we've realized that the best thing is collaboration, to collaborate and not to try and do everything ourselves. So there are certain things that we know that if we try to start and finish ourselves, will take a long time, it will be a long journey. But there are those of you who are able to do it. You have solutions, you have some ideas, you have things you put in place. And then the question we ask ourselves is, how do we now incorporate what you have, the services you have, based on the data we've received in terms of what the customers want, to make that happen? So we're not trying to reinvent the wheel, we're not trying to do everything ourselves, but being a lot more collaborative, particularly around payments. Payments is a big deal here. Why? Because of our infrastructure. You know, as our infrastructure improves, I'm saying about Nigeria generally, as infrastructure improves, things improve a lot more. If you go to other parts of the world, you find that peer-to-peer -peer payments is really not a big deal. Why? Because if I'm going to a store, I'm either paying with my card, I'm doing, well, there's NFC, there's so many options that I have. But here, we've noticed that when we're making payments, I'm going to take money either from the ATM, right? So I'm taking money from the ATM to pay someone. I'm taking withdrawing money from somewhere to pay someone, as opposed to being able to pay that person any which way. So what's the flexibility we can bring in that? It's all about the collaborations we've come in touch with. You know, we have so many fantastic fintechs. Before, I mean, this time two years ago, the discussion in the network, in the industry was, oh, fintechs are coming, the banks are going down. And I have a different view. My view is that it's not about one or the other. It's about a win-win situation. Let's have a handshake. There are certain things that the fintechs can do, the health techs can do, the edutechs can do, that the banks simply are not equipped to do. So how do we have a handshake? And how do we do certain things that we can do that you possibly, probably cannot do as quickly as we can? So it's about having a handshake and having a collaboration and having a conversation about these things. So there's a collaborative part on the payments, but that's not the only area we're collaborating because there's a wide spectrum of services that people need. If we move to the next slide, and we look at supply chain management. So whether you're a distributor, whether you're a manufacturer, whatever it is that you're dealing with. The next slide, please. Thank you for looking at supply chain management. Now, there's something, there's a product that's leaving company X and going to a distributor and then ending up with a retailer. Well, it goes through a wholesaler, the retailer, and then it ends up in our hands. It's such a long chain. How do we track? If I'm the one selling a product, how do I track everything? So we've seen that there's a lot that's going on right now with AI, artificial intelligence. It's not perfect. As with anything that's coming up, any new technology is being fine-tuned. And right now, AI is still learning. It's machine learning, right? So it's still learning. It doesn't have a PhD yet. It's probably still in high school. Very soon, it's going to graduate from university. Then, you know, but it's still work in progress, and it's still moving. And so we're seeing that how we can leverage artificial intelligence for the supply chain network. Blockchain is something that's been a big deal. We've realized that 
there's a lot we can do. Now, while we may not have blockchain across interbanks, but within organizations, there are some organizations that we're working with who have already started implementing some blockchain solutions, especially for this, for the supply chain management. So we're seeing that we're, going to, we're having to retool the way we think. Now, also, in terms of visibility, people want to see, I want to track, I want to know what is happening at every stage of my transaction. Now, I'm talking about corporates here, but even for individuals, you want to know, if I've paid this money, has this person actually received it? Where am I? What is my transaction doing? I don't want to have a debit, and then somebody will come back and say, oh, but I didn't receive the money. How do you track that? So visibility is key. Then, can we move to the next slide? The truth is, in Nigeria, we cannot run away from international trade. We still do a lot of importation, and increasingly we're doing a lot of nominal exportation. So how do we actually track that? And how do we make it easy for the importer, for the exporter, to be able to track their transactions? Okay, so I'm opening my Form M, I'm doing my FX transaction, and I'm doing everything from the comfort of my phone. Blockchain again keeps coming up. So you see there's some recurring decimals across each area. Right? And then we're finding that we're fine tuning it, and it's not a one size fits all. The use case depends on whatever it is the customer or the business wants to do. But we're seeing this technology comes up a lot. And then again, it comes back to tracking. If you look at the last two slides I've talked about, I've shared, what are people talking about? Is visibility, is understanding the status of their transactions, is being able to track what's going on so that they're not in the dark. You don't have to call an account officer to find out what is happening here. You can actually have access to this information yourself. And so for us, if we move to the next slide, what you see is that it's a paradigm shift for banks. It's a paradigm shift. And it's thinking, what does a customer actually need? Safety, security, solutions, not products, but solutions. Here is my problem. Here is a solution that can fix that problem. That is what we're coming to. So the future of banking experiences is more about ease, is comfort, is doing what you need to do. I work in a bank, and I can tell you, in this year alone, I can count the number of times I've been to a banking hall, because I don't want to go to the banking hall unless I have to. And I work with a bank. So how much more someone who doesn't even have to physically be in that building? Really, so we're putting ourselves in the customer's shoes that what does the customer actually need? And so to address this, time is fast going, can we go to the next slide? We're looking at something as simple as from the get-go, the first stage, can we next slide please, is even from as simple as opening your account. Why must you come to the bank to open an account? Why? Why can't you do it on your phone? Why can't you do it on your laptop? Why can't you do it in your office? Why? Certain things that we've put in place. So you can now, we have that easy online account opening. Now we have it for individuals, we're working on it for businesses. So that you can open your account online, simple, again, not physical, digital. But obviously by the time you're getting to a particular transaction amount, because we're regulated, you must come to the bank if you're doing you know, serious volumes. But to open an account, you do it from your office. You don't need to come to the bank for that. And depending on whatever channel it is you're using, five minutes, you're done. And then what we realize is that many people want to do different things. Yes, I work with a bank, but my banking experience should provide other things. What am I actually taking money out for? What is the payment for? So if you can go to the next slide. Next slide, please. Thank you. We're now saying that, you know, what are the banking services you want at the top of your fingers? So yes, I want to make payments, but that's just step one. What are you making the payments for? Are you buying movie tickets? Are you buying food? Are you going out with friends? What are those things? Are you traveling? Do you want to buy your tickets online? Can we go to the next slide? Do you even want to do your trade transactions? We talked about uh, that earlier. And then, you know, we're talking about investments and savings. Why can't you do all that on your phone? And so these are the things that we put in place so that on your tap, on the tap, you know, just tap your fingers, you're doing everything you need to do in one place. So rather than you rushing to the bank each time, we're bringing the bank to you. And we're believing that that really is what the future should be. So the customer is the customer. You tell us what it is you need, then we need to go back and figure out how to make that happen for you. And then what we realize also is that beyond the technology, we realize, we move to the next slide, is that there's a huge business. Um, there's a lot that's going on in terms of women running businesses. Now, apologies to the men, but this is women-focused now. R women running businesses. And if we're looking at the population that we have, 
50%, so it's 50-50, but we see a lot of women are doing what we call micro-businesses. So you may have a job, but you have running something on the side, or you're running business from your home. And so that's why we developed what we call She Ventures. And that basically is women-run businesses, design solutions for women running businesses, mentorship, you know, career ad ad advices. We have zero interest loans up to from 500,000 to 5 million, you know, but there's so much that we put in place because we know that we need to actually help you run your business. So if you move to the next slide, I'm about to run out of time, so I'm just going to the very last slide. So we have realized with banking, as with anything else in life, is that really the change is this. Can we move to the next slide, please? that really the difficulty we realize in life, in, in life is not so much as having new ideas, but changing the old mindset. And so we realize that we've had to take off the old hat and put on a new hat and change a new mindset so that we can give you the banking experience that you actually want. Thank you very much.